Hello and welcome to a Blu-ray update video. Yeah. So you remember when I made that video saying this is my last ever Blu-ray update video and I was never going to make a video again showing you a bunch of Blu-rays that I'd bought recently that I've not watched yet. Here's a bunch of Blu-rays I've bought recently that I haven't watched yet. So, um, I was actually surprised to see that it was two months ago that I made that last ever Blu-ray update video. But I, 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 I wouldn't expect people to catch up and uh, keep up with all of my videos. So at one point I did mention somewhere along the line over the past two months that my goal for 2021 is to not buy any Blu-rays. Except for limited edition massive cinema stuff and except for Jackie Chan releases because there's a lot of cool ones coming up. So with exceptions... I'm not going to really buy much in 2021. So why not do another Blu-ray? I've got like a, <laughs> got a big stack of stuff and, you know, a few things I have seen, actually. Not many, but there's a few things. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just, um, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I need to get more views. I need to get more views. No, I just, um, I felt like I'm not going to get around to watching some of these for a, a very long time. And so... It is kind of nice to keep track of the new stuff you bought, but also at the same time, I think I'm not getting any Blu-rays for Christmas. Um, that's coming up like next month. Like we're very close to Christmas now. It's crazy. This year is just melted by. Um, so there's not going to be another big stack like this coming up. The only thing I've got coming in. Uh, oh, I forgot. There's one other thing I should grab. The only other thing I've got coming in is um, the Weathering with You 4K Collector's Edition thing from Zavi. Oh my God, Zavi. Pray that I, I get nice packaging on that when it's sent. But yeah, apart from that, and I'll probably pick up the uh, new Fist of Fury, Jackie Chan release. But apart, apart from that, there's nothing else I'm getting for the rest of the year. And then we're right into my goal of not really buying much. This is like a an, an epilogue to, to the last Blu-ray update ever. So I'm going to wrap through some of these. I've got like big box sets. I've got Jackie Chan stuff from 88 Films. I've got uh, limited edition Eureka stuff. Um, yeah, so, yeah, a few box sets, like I said. First two things, a music Blu-rays, I picked up Rush R40 Live. I just filmed a, a very long video talking about this and talking about Rush and my recent, um, uh, resurgence of listening to them. That doesn't make sense as a sentence. My recent rediscovery of my passion for Rush, I suppose I should say. So I've done a, a nice video on this, I'll put it up and, uh, you know. There's no need to really talk about this, but it's a very nice release of their last ever tour from 2015, which now, given, given Neil Peart's passing in January of this year, is now the, the definitively final Rush tour, unfortunately. And I already talked about this in another video, a mail day video. It's Nick Mason's Source Full of Secrets. Still haven't watched this yet. Um, but it was nice to get a Blu-ray of the, the show, the tour that I went to in 2019. Uh, I'll just show this one as well because I also covered this in a previous video. It is the Street Fighter 88 Films release. Very cool. So I've already talked about this in the Mail Day video. Now we get into some new stuff. I've wanted this for many years. Wasn't so much waiting for a good price, but if I saw it for a good price, I'd definitely grab it. This is about £7. It is um, Bill Douglas Trilogy. So these are three very bleak films, I think. Uh, quite short as well, I think. So what do we got? Okay, 175 minutes for all three films, so I'd say if you average that out, it's about an hour per movie. Oh, here we go, 48 minutes, 55 minutes, and then 72 minutes. So these were made between 1972 and 1978, and uh, yeah, so these, it's uh, it's kind of like, it seems almost like the the British version of you know, Italian neorealism, from what I can gather. Um, Douglas's magnificent award-winning trilogy is the product of an assured, formidable artistic vision. These are some of the most compelling films about childhood ever made. So I've heard it's, it's a pretty grim kind of, you know, series of films, but hey, I'm and I like the concept of doing three films and, you know, telling a story. I don't know if it's the same character. I don't know too much about it. I don't really need to because that's kind of the way I roll with these things. I get kind of just a germ of an idea of, of what this film, or in this case, films might be about. And I'm like, yep, I will gladly blind buy that one. This one is the complete opposite of a blind buy. Getting into the box sets now, we have the Akira Kurosawa Samurai Collection. This has been 
about a five, six year period of just waiting to pull the trigger on this one. And uh, I think 25 pounds is pretty much as low as this is gonna, is gonna get without some kind of price glitch. So I decided to jump on it, even though I already own all these films, apart from Throne of Blood. I don't have the Throne of Blood Criterion, which I really want, but uh, until then, I now have it in this nice collection. So this is a, a series of samurai films that Akira Kurosawa made in the 50s and 60s. We have Seven Samurai, Throne of Blood, um, The Hidden Fortress, Yojimbo, and Sanjuro. So the reason I wanted this is, number one, I'm a huge Kurosawa fan. Just as a completist, I wanted this because it does have BFI um, extras. It has the George Lucas interview that was on the BFI DVD, so I wanted that in my collection. It has a 2013 um, kind of appreciation and discussion on Kurosawa called The Art of Akira Kurosawa um, by Tony Raines. And Tony Raines is just a legend of, um, you know, Asian cinema knowledge. And uh, it's like a 40, 49 minute interview. So that was another big reason for me wanting this. And I think one of the audio commentaries is not on the Criterion releases. And also apparently Yojimbo and Sanjuro look better on these discs than they do in the Criterion versions, although apparently the the levels, uh, the kind of the black levels, I guess, or the contrast levels aren't right, so you need, need to fiddle around with them, but either way. Also, it's nice just to have Region B versions of some of these films as well, though I do have Seven Samurai already, but not Yojimbo, Sanjiro, Hidden Fortress, or Throne of Blood on Region B Blu-ray, so that's nice. But this is a really nice, nicely done set, like it's got a cool, cool packaging to it, I'm glad it hasn't already got round to like a budget release, but you get like a matte finish slipcase and then a really nice glossy um, digipack that holds the um, the four discs. Nice booklet in there as well. And uh, yeah, so that was just something that I saw. It was like 25, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get it. It's, I need to, need to have it in my collection. So this was a really cool addition, I think, to my collection. I haven't watched Kurosawa in years because I'm still fucking waiting. A criterion to pull their bloody finger out and either get some more Kurosawa upgrades on the go or just do us a, a massive box set already. Just they, 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 they've just neglected the kind of the good name Kurosawa over the past like when was the last one? It was like Dreams, I think, which was fucking wasn't that like five years ago now? Like Jesus Christ. I mean, just think of all the great Kurosawa films that have yet to be upgraded to Blu ray and upgraded to Criterion. The list goes on and on anyway. We have a controversial Blu-ray of sorts. Controversial for me at least, and that's uh, I posted a video about this and it's Dawn of the Dead. So that's that, I'll put that back on. No, so people didn't really seem to get the joke uh, when, <laughs> when I made the video about this. And I don't really feel the need to explain it. You either get it or you don't, you know? But um, you know, it's the, it's the big Dawn of the Dead 4K set. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's made videos about it. You know, you, you probably have seen, like, an in-depth kind of, you know, dissection of what the inside of this looks like at that point. So, at this point, so, oh, wow, the, actually, the, the digipacks look very dusty and dirty, which is strange. Why would they, how would they get dirty? Anyway, so this is the Dawn of the Dead set. It has pretty much everything you could possibly fucking imagine for this film. And I do love the film. Very pricey, and uh, as I think I said in the video before I kind of trolled everyone with <laughs> about eight minutes of Hong Kong 97, which I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I, I was I was, I was enjoying myself just seeing the dislikes trickle in and then pour in on that video. <laughs> I think it has about 21 dislikes, and I'm just like, yes, bring them in. <laughs> it's just, it tickled me. Hey, if you can't laugh at yourself and have fun, you know, then, you know, what's the point? Uh, it did come with a few um, dings and crushed corners because, as I did mention, Amazon sent it in a fucking envelope. The cunts. I can't believe that. That was just outrageous to me. And, of course, it's sold out. It's a limited edition. So I couldn't get a replacement copy. Not that I think it, it's really worth it when it's a surface ding on the corner like that. But, you know, just come on. It's a fucking... 75 pound box set. Don't send it in a fucking envelope, you stupid twats. Anyway, moving on to another box set, which was equally packaged mysteriously. I mean, it's just a, it's a normal sized box set, and it was in a box that was literally like maybe five or six times taller than the box set, and maybe twice as wide, 
this huge box that arrived. I was like, what the fuck is this? And I realized what it was. And it's rattling around on the inside. I'm like, what have they done? But I opened it up and it's full of all this like, um, it's not bubble wrap. It's not packing paper. It's like the kind of the big pillow bubble packaging things, you know, it's like just big pillows of air. And then on the inside was the box set and it was like bubble wrapped like a bomb. Like it was, it was pretty well secure. So fair enough. But what a waste of cardboard and packaging, you know. And I didn't actually buy this. Uh, this was an anniversary present um, for me from Connie. Ah, I guess I probably should show this, but I'm not going to. But I did get the random aside. I did get the big 4K collector's edition of Joker that just came out. It's like the big LP size box with the soundtrack score, the 4K steel book. Um, I got that for Connie for our, our anniversary, and she loved. That's probably one of her favorite films. So she was really excited to see like a a nice limited edition set. And I did I did comment that you know it's. Uh, a little bit like getting her a bowling ball with my name on it, but, but she did really appreciate it. She thought it was very cool. And so she got me something in return for our 11 year anniversary. This relationship now goes to 11. And so she got me this because I saw it in a sale and I thought that's a really damn good price. It is Marlena Dietrich and Joseph von Sternberg at Paramount 1930s and 1935. The indicator box set. This is an absolutely stunning piece of work because that's what it is it's a piece of work this is an art piece this is just phenomenal uh, like genuinely like i'm not being facetious this is probably one of the best box sets i've ever seen in terms of presentation um because you've got a nice hard outer box beautiful artwork that wraps around the box very very cool and goes around to the back and these are all the special features like holy shit then you got the six movies which are Morocco, Dishonored, Shanghai Express, Blonde Venus, The Scarlet Empress, and The Devil is a Woman. I've only seen two uh, Dietrich von Sternberg collaboration films, the first being Blue Angel, which I think was their first, uh, which they did in Germany, and then Shanghai Express I have seen, which I really, really liked, and I saw it on like a ropey old DVD copy, so I'm really excited to see Shanghai Express in, in proper HD. I think it's some sort of restoration. Yeah, 4K restoration, very cool. But the amount of extras on this is stunning. But then what you have on the inside is you have the best of both worlds. You have the hard outer box packaging, the sturdy packaging that many UK boutique labels put out. But then you have the gorgeous kind of digipack style of the Criterion releases. But the Criterion releases usually have, um, you know, really flimsy outer boxes, which get fucking caved in so easily. So you get like the nice thick booklet here. I'm not going to go through everything. And I just love, oh my god, it's just so, so fucking cool. Really, really nice artwork. You each has got their individual thing with the extras on the back. And even when you open them up, they're really beautiful looking. It's just nice. I think there's maybe even like alternate posters. Yeah, so you just get like, it's just so much material crammed in here. And it's just a really classy, beautifully put together box set. I hope I enjoy the other films as much as I liked um, Skull Empress, not Skull Empress, why did I say that? That's really, probably because I saw it on top of the box set. I'll leave that flub in as, uh, as you guessed it for free. As much as I enjoyed Shanghai Express, but I was kind of, um, I was kind of already in the bag for that because I love movies set on trains. So, you know, it'll be intriguing to see what I think of other films that, uh, that these two made together. And it's always interesting when a director has like a, almost a muse performer that they work with over and over again but uh, yeah indicator really an incredible company most of the stuff they do is not really to my interest like a lot of the hammer stuff which i enjoy but not enough to spend that much on the box sets you know but this is um yeah, really really cool phenomenal you know design went into the making of this box set now we have two jackie chan releases and oddly i don't know why they've done this but the first one here is shaolin wooden men and uh, I would say this is a fairly underwhelming cover compared to the slew of recent ones that have been done by Kung Fu Bob. It's very cool. It just it doesn't seem to to pop as much as the other ones. Um, so this one's a new 2K remaster of the from the original 35 millimeter negative. Uh, lots of alternate audio options as you would uh, expect. A couple of audio commentaries and um, a new kind of featurette and stuff. So there we go. Shaolin Wooden Ment. This is from 1976. So this is a fairly early-ish Jackie Chan movie. And then the other one that they recently put out is Spiritual Kung Fu. 
what surprised me is that this one has a fingerprint magnet glossy slipcover, and this one has got a gorgeous matte finish one. It's like a really nice texture to it. Well, not even a texture, but it's just like it's nice and, you know, you don't feel like you're smudging anything when you touch it. It's really cool. And I love this artwork. This is really cool. So there's a bit of a supernatural element to this movie. This is another 2K remaster um, of the Hong Kong cut from the original 35mm negative. Uh, new subtitles, audio options up the ass, commentary, archival stuff, um, scenes from a different version of the film. Yeah, lots of really cool extras and stuff. I, I'm honestly just now sitting, I'm hoarding these new 88 films Jackie Chan releases so that I'll do a marathon of them at one point because there's just so many really cool ones. Like there's Dragon Lord, some of them on the shelf, there's Dragon Lord, Fearless Hyena. Um, there's just a lot that I've been building that I haven't watched yet. And then we've got New Fist of Fury coming out. we got the Lucky Stars trilogy coming out in March from Eureka. Then there's the Young Master release, which is going to be like a super deluxe 88 film. They're going to run out of Jackie Chan movies eventually, but it would be really cool if we start seeing stuff like um, Police Story 3, which is First Strike, I think. Or was that the fourth one? I don't know. But there's some that just haven't really been... Like, I would love to see 88 films do um, Drunken Master 2. Like, not Legend of Drunken Master, Drunken Master 2, like the original version. That would be incredible. Rumble in the Bronx, Who Am I? I mean, there's just so many possibilities. Anyway, so that's the Jackie Chan stuff. And finally, we have four Eureka Masters of Cinema releases. So the first two are kind of the most... No, they're not the most recent. I don't know. They, they came out in, like, the past... No, it is. It is the two most recent ones. Okay. Um, and I, I don't know why. I don't know if I should mention this. Like, uh, Eureka were doing a deal for, like, these two new releases for £50. And you can get them both on Amazon for, like, 20 ish each. So, <laughs> sorry, Eureka, I, I would have ordered with you direct, but I would prefer to save £10, I think. And this is kind of like a, a Ishiro Honda-themed um, set of releases. The first one is Ishiro Honda Double Feature with the H-Man and Battle in Outer Space. I really don't know why films like this have been released in the Masters of Cinema range. I mean, they're, I, mean I don't know. They, they, they could surprise me, but they're, they're essentially B-movies, B right? Like, that's the kind of... It's kind of the vibe I'm getting here. And yet, you know, they'll release films like, you know, the Project A movies and the Police Story movies and not include them in the Masters of Cinema. Like, as the, I, I just feel like the range that I have so much passion for, which is the, the MOC range... Um, Eureka have released movies that really could have been in this range, including some of those Jackie Chan movies, I think. But I thought, well, I guess they feel like it needs to be of a certain quality or style, and now we're getting movies like this, which is really strange to me, but I'm not going to complain. You know, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by it, and I think that any film and any style and genre has a, a place in film history and should be explored and, for the most part, celebrated. So this is a two-disc edition that um, obviously has a disc for each movie, and uh, features the original Japanese and English release versions of both films. And there's a new audio commentary for um, both films, um, but there's also two commentaries per films. And I actually don't think there's any featurettes; they're just commentaries. But that's that's still pretty cool. I haven't opened this one yet. I've seen the the booklet. I don't know if there's alternate artwork. Actually, I should check that out. Let's just check that out quickly, because I think I have a hunch there might be like two different sides to each film, perhaps. Oh, this is nice. And this this is, I was just talking about the slipcovers. With slipcovers, it seems like you get like super glossy or super matte. And Eureka used these ones that are like kind of a mix of both. There's like a glossy sheen to it, but it's also not completely, you know, it's not like a massive fingerprint magnet. It's like it's got a nice, I don't know, it's just a different quality to it for some reason. Ah, yeah, okay. So on the inside, you just have a cover for the H-Man. Uh, and it's spine number 214. And then on the back you have the H-Man. So I'm assuming the inside has the alternate cover. Um, okay, Battle in Outer Space. I, I don't know if I like that because you have to either pick one or the other. Whereas with the... Uh, what was it? The Edgar Allan Poe release with the three movies, you had like one on this side, one on the other. And that was kind of a cool way to do it, I thought. So I don't know. But it's yeah, it's a it's a nice release. I, I have no idea what I'll make of the movies. You know, that's that's it's gonna be an interesting one for sure. Getting to getting around to these two. And I'll probably like do a double bill in. 
kind of get through both of them. This one really surprised me in that it's a nice um, big, well not big, but it's like a, a nice chunky um, hard box release and it is obviously, given the previous um, Blu-ray I just showed, well, I think this is a film, yes, yeah, no, this, yeah, this is uh, from the same director, right? Hang on a minute, let me just check that. I don't want to get this wrong, because I, I hate getting stuff like this wrong. Okay, so he's listed on the front as Ishiro Honda. In the credits, it says directed by Inoshiro Honda. So I don't know if that's like, he has a, a shortened version for certain credits, I don't know. Either way, same director, it's, it's Honda, and uh, it's Mothra. So at this point, I could really do like a monster month with the Godzilla set and the Gamera set, and now a nice release of Mothra, which I love the artwork on this. It's a really cool, funky colors, like the pink and the yellow, really, really cool. And uh, there's actually artwork on the back. You usually don't get that with these releases, it's just like the bland color, yeah. But uh, yeah, and it comes with like a poster, I think. I think I, op I opened this one up already. Yeah, it's like a big, nice poster. Really cool, like, original artwork, um, Japanese poster there, and a really nice, um, colourful booklet as well. And you get this huge poster, which I'm not going to open, but it's, like, a really, really nicely done. Anyway, Mothra, my only experience with Mothra is in the, the 2019 film, uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. So I'm sure it's not going to look anywhere as beautiful or elegant as that in this area. It's going to be from the 60s, right? 1961. And this one has, I think probably two, yeah, has the Japanese and English versions. Uh, brand new commentary with David Kalat, who's, a, you know, he's a really, he does really good commentaries. And then there's another one for the English version, interview with Kim Newman. So there's some good stuff on this. It's a nice release. Again, I, I really am not sure what I'll make of this, but I'm absolutely brand loyal to Eureka. And the other two I've got, uh, this is spine number 239, it is Waxworks. The silent film by Paul Lenny, who, yeah, who directed The Man Who Laughs. So this has an option of two newly created scores, feature length commentary, in search of the original version of Paul Lenny's Waxworks, an interview um, with a woman uh, that's based on her presentation after the premiere of the restored film at a certain festival. <laughs> At a certain place in 2020, there's a lot of names and locations in there that I cannot pronounce. So I'm not going to just step over the minefield of many different mispronunciations. Uh, another piece from Kim Newman. Oh, a featurette that was originally screened in 1920s German cinemas. That's really cool. I didn't know about that special feature. So, yeah, I don't know much about this one. But again, it's, you know, it's a silent film. I'm all in. And, uh, oh, this feels like... The weight of it feels very light. I think they <laughs> these are made of helium, so they're very light. Um, Eureka, actually, there's been a bit, not controversy, but people have noticed they've started using different covers. I'm going to open this up, actually. They've been us using different cases for their Blu-rays, and they're going to transition in 2021 to the Criterion-style um, cases, which, if you're unfamiliar, I'll, I'll show you an example in just a second. Oh, I can't really, I can't really tell, but some people are saying, like, there's something about the the width or something, I don't, I don't even know what it really is, but it's, uh, there's something about the new, but yeah, so I'll show you the, the Jean-Claude Van Damme thing a second. So this is a Criterion style case, like it, the artwork fills the whole case, whereas the normal Blu-ray has that, um, the banner there at the top. So Eureka are now switching to this style, because these ones are going out of print, or like they're not in production as much, which is strange to me because that's like, I don't know, it just seems like surely companies like Arrow, BFI, Eureka are constantly ordering those kinds of cases. So I don't know why their business is drying up. So it's going to be strange because we're now going to go from cases that look like that to ones that fill the whole thing and it's not going to look as consistent on the shelf. But it is what it is and it's definitely not even a first world problem. This is a zero world problem. It's just... It's not even worth discussing, but yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up anyway, because that's the, uh, the kind of obsessive collector that I am. And finally, another, um, you know, kind of limited release that I decided to jump on. It's interesting to me how sometimes they've got so much to kind of talk about on the back with, like, the history of this film and all the extras they've got. I mean, look at all the text there. And then there's other films where they're just like, fuck, put the font level up to 20. <laughs> It's just like, it almost looks like one of those, um, 
you know, large print books for like, you know, people with trouble with their sights. So this is, um, I didn't even tell what the fucking film was. Made in Hong Kong, a film by Fruit Chan. I've heard from Graham Mandry Film, this is an excellent film. It's from a 4K digital restoration. Uh, a couple of new interviews on here, which is pretty cool. Uh, and with the director as well. So, yeah. I have no idea what this is about. Uh, so I'll just throw it on at some point and just dive in and see what it's all about. Now there's one more thing that I didn't grab that I should run over and, and just snatch quickly. And uh, even though I'll probably do a full video on it at some point. But uh, if you just bear with me one second. And I don't know why I say that because I'm going to edit that fucking part out anyway. I have a newly arrived um, item in the mail. This just came in. Oh, total Recall. The 4K Blu-ray. There's been a few editions of this. They've re-released this on Blu-ray. I'm assuming with the new transfer that's been done. Uh, also like a 50 pound you know, Ultimate Collector Edition box set. I almost went with that, but I don't... I love the score, but I'm never going to listen to it on CD. It's all on Spotify anyway, so... Just one of those things where I just thought, I don't want to spend that much, but I will spend... You know, it was 30 quid for this still, but, but this is such a gorgeous... Oh, beautiful artwork. And I was really happy to see it. I was like, oh, no, you know, like, what the hell? We get the embossing on the title. It's been a fucking while since we've seen some good old quality embossing on a steelbook. It just, it just gives it that extra flavor of, like, coolness, I guess. I love how whoever did the artwork has crammed literally every fucking <laughs> character onto this. You've even got the character that Hank plays from Breaking Bad. You know, look who's talking. You know? <laughs> it's just got every character on it. I love it. I love this artwork. Get ready for a surprise on the back. So this is the 4K remaster, uh, but it is an actual 4K disc. So there's a new Open Your Mind scoring Total Recall featurette, a new Dreamers Within the Dream developing Total Recall featurette. Then there's Total Excess, how Carol Co. changed Hollywood. I don't know if this is like a feature length fe you know, documentary or anything, but um, people haven't really t spoken about it too much. It has the, the classic commentary with uh, Schwarzenegger and Paul Verhoeven. And then all of those extras are then duplicated on a second Blu-ray disc along with um, some more archival features as well. So this is pretty packed with um, special features. It's interesting to see quite a few of the special features on the Ultra HD disc as well. But uh, yeah, you get three discs on this, the, the, the 4K, the regular Blu-ray, and then the second Blu-ray disc of special features. So I can't wait to revisit this film in 4K. It's one of my favorite films. It's one of the most quotable films, I think, for me ever. Um, just for my personal, you know, uh, enjoyment of such quotes. <laughs> it's just one of the, it's just endlessly quotable. Anyway, there we go. A good old fashioned 30 minute waffle fest with um, lots of stuff I haven't seen. But that will probably be it for, I would say, maybe a couple of years <laughs> as far as like doing a full. Blu-ray update and buying a lot of stuff. 2021 is going to be a bit different and, uh, you know, I think that it's going to be a good thing to save some money and maybe put that into other things, in, into different creative interests. Not that collecting Blu-rays is a fucking creative interest, but, you know, I can put it into a creative interest, I should say. I'll leave that in. That didn't make any sense, but, you know, instead of spending money on some of these things, I really want to focus on watching more of the shit that I've already got. But, you know, still grabbing the Jackie Chan stuff that's limited and really cool. And the Eureka limited editions too. Because I've I've been keeping up with the, the massive cinema collection for so long. I don't want to slip behind and miss things that will later cost hundreds of pounds to get down the line. So, otherwise I'll be very light on um, future purchases. Which, you know. And, and it's true, there's loads of things I want to buy. But I, I just, I just, I, I shouldn't, you know. I'm starting to see that more, that, uh, you know, this, there has to be a limit with these things. And there's um, there's two things I really want right now. Um, the Back to the Future 4K box set and the Lord of the Rings 4K box set. But I, you know, I'm not going to watch all those films anytime. I guess I probably would if I bought the box set. But, you know, those things are like studio releases. Those things are always going to be around. So I'm in no rush, really, to get to them. And I'm intrigued to see what the caps are going to look like on Lord of the Rings, because that's like a hugely anticipated release. Back to the Future seems pretty decent, um, as far as what the 4K discs look like. And it's really intriguing, actually, because it was almost 10 years ago, it was 9 years ago that I first got into Blu-ray. And the two big box sets I got that Christmas was Back to the Future 
and Lord of the Rings. And now here we are, almost 10 years later, almost a decade later, and those are the two big 4K box sets that are coming out towards the end of the year. So kind of like a mirroring of the different formats and, and the same two franchises, but this time I'm not going to get them. And I did hear that they're going to re-release Lord of the Rings on 4K again next year with new special features, apparently. So I'm going to kind of hold out for that, I think. But uh, yeah, I, I almost did pull the trigger on getting the Lord of the Rings, the three steel books, but they sold out so fucking quickly. I didn't even have a chance to think about it. So anyway, all that to say, thank you for watching. And I will see you mercifully in the next video. Hey, <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...